The book of Daniel has a specific example of spiritual warfare that casts further light on the location of Satan's kingdom. In fact, it describes a battle of angels. In Daniel chapter 10, Daniel describes how he set himself to pray and seek God for a revelation concerning the future of his people Israel. For three weeks, he devoted himself with particular intensity to prayer and waiting on God. At the end of the three weeks, an angel from heaven came to Daniel with the answer to his prayer. The angel was so glorious and powerful that all the people with Daniel were scattered, and he was the only one who remained to receive the revelation. Daniel 10, 2-6 says, At that time I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. On the twenty-fourth day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen, with a belt of fine gold from Euphaz around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. As I have already mentioned, Daniel's companions could not stand this glorious apparition and just disappeared. Then the angel began to speak to Daniel, and the part on which we would focus on is verses 12 and 13. Then he said, Don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request had been heard in heaven. I have come in answer to your prayer. Verse 12. It is essential to know that from the first day that Daniel started praying, his prayer was heard, and the angel was dispatched with the answer. However, the angel did not arrive on earth with Daniel's prayers for 21 days. What kept the angel three weeks on the journey? Satan's angels opposed him. Somewhere in the journey from heaven to earth, the angel was required to go through Satan's kingdom in the heavenly. There he was opposed by evil angels who tried to prevent him from getting through with a message to Daniel. Verse 13 continues with the following, But for twenty-one days the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels came to help me, and I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. All this took place in the heavenly realms. The leader of Satan's angels is called the prince of the kingdom of Persia, the chief ruler over Persia. Related to him and apparently under him were various kings or lesser angels. Then, on God's side, the angel that came to help the original angel was the archangel Michael. In Daniel 12.1, we read this about Michael. At that time, Michael, the archangel who stands guard over your nation, will arise. The word great prince we can interpret as archangel. This particular archangel, Michael, stands guard over the sons of Daniel's people, the children of Israel. In some unique way, Michael is charged by God with watching over the interests of and protecting Israel. Because this whole revelation is centered on Israel's future, it was very much in the interests of Israel that the messenger should get through. So when the first angel was held up, the archangel Michael came to help him, and they battled there with the satanic angels for 21 days. The satanic angels were represented by one who was known as the prince of the kingdom of Persia, the supreme ruler, and under him various kings or subordinate rulers who had various areas of authority. For instance, there might be one king over each major city of the Persian Empire, one over each major ethnic group, perhaps one also over each of the various religious and pagan cults of the Persian Empire. We get a picture of a highly organized, structured kingdom with various areas and descending levels of authority with headquarters in the heavenly, a kingdom of rebellious fallen spirit beings. The angel again spoke about this conflict in Daniel 10:20. He replied, Do you know why I have come? 
Soon I must return to fight against the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. In other words, the battle against this evil, satanic angel, who dominated the empire of Persia, was not yet complete. There would be further war in the heavens. The angel continued with the following. After that, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Greece will come. Verse 20. In other words, once victory was gained over the evil angel who ruled the empire of Persia, the next empire that would arise would be the empire of Greece, and that also would have its own specific evil angel who was the ruler or prince of Greece. In verse 21, the angel who was speaking to Daniel said the following, No one helps me against these spirit princes except Michael, your spirit prince. So we see again that the archangel Michael is associated explicitly with protecting and watching over the interests of God's people, Israel. We also see that it took the united strength of the first angel and Michael to overcome the ruling angels in Satan's kingdom who were opposing the outworking of God's purpose for Israel. You might wonder at the reference to Persia and Greece. Let us be reminded that the four major Gentile empires successfully dominated Israel and the city of Jerusalem from about the 5th century BC and onwards. They were Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. Persia and Greece were significant because, at that time, they were the two dominant Gentile empires. We see from these passages in Daniel that the battle centered around God's people and God's purposes. I believe that is still true today. Wherever God's people are, and God's purposes are being worked out, is where the spiritual battle will be most intense. The effect of Daniel's prayers is somewhat staggering. When Daniel started to pray on earth, it set all heaven in motion, both the angels of God and Satan's angels. That gives us a terrific insight into what prayer can do. We should also know that God's angels apparently needed the help of Daniel's prayers to get them through and accomplish their mission. Again, that gives us tremendous insight into the effectiveness of prayer. Time to time we read in the news of people who have risen up to overthrow their governments. Almost always a vast conspiracy is involved. A person can't do it by himself. He needs to have help. He needs co-plotters, co-conspirators, co-revolutionaries. Does it astonish you to see then that when Satan was cast out of heaven, he didn't go alone? O oh, Holy Spirit, Jesus asked the Father to give me the Spirit of Truth. John 14, 17 Even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Help me to see you in the word of God. Open my mind to understand your truths, and open my heart to accept your truths in faith, even before I gain the right belief. Holy Spirit, be the caretaker of my life. Sustain the seeds of heaven that you have already planted inside me and make it flourish so that your love, your ways, and your kingdom will continuously develop inside me and bear much good fruit for others. O Holy Spirit, Jesus stated, Do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you what you should say. Luke 12, 11 and 12. And when they bring you onto the synagogues, and onto magistrates, and powers, take ye no thought how or what ye shall answer, or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. Assist me to believe in you continually. Help me we to hope learn you were blessed with by you. this message. Nothing Click is here impossible. to watch our other videos.